everybody. This one is about the real Article 13 in amendment. Um, copies of these documents can be found in my private group at Yahoo called Administering Your Public Servants. I have YouTube videos that are videos of private information shares that show these and other court citations that are available for donation. And this last paragraph is for all the Satanist order follower revenue officers operating in their private capacity under the Federal Tax Lien Act of 1966. Donations to support this work are appreciated, but they can put their privileges and benefits up their rectal orifice because I prefer gold or silver coin. And only as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept the IOUs, the commercial paper, the Federal Reserve notes, fake money, uh, PayPal gifts, checks, money orders, etc. Send me an email for particulars. Anyways, this is a um, uh, taken from the uh, Texas State Library and Archives Commission. This is a certified copy. This was done on the 3rd of July, 2008. And there's a certification. This is on the front page. And uh, this is the, uh, the revised codes of the laws of Virginia. And uh, 1819, and uh, notice at the bottom where the arrow is, there's a, a certification stamp. And then at the top, uh, laws of Virginia. And uh, the 1819 is, a is underlined. And, uh, and it's the Constitution of the United States of America. Actually, it includes the um, Virginia Constitution as well, but that's immaterial to the topic of discussion. And so the, uh, the Constitution of the United States is uh, underlined, and uh, also the certification stamp, again, is down there. Um, the arrow's pointing to it. And this is uh, uh, Article 13, an amendment. And uh, notice it says, if any citizen of the United States shall accept, claim, receive, or retain any title of nobility or honor, or shall, without the consent of Congress, accept and retain any present pension, office, or emolument of any kind, without whatever, from any emperor, king, prince, or foreign power, such person shall cease to be a citizen of the United States and shall be incapable of holding any office of trust or profit under them or either of them. And so, and so that's found in uh, 1819 Virginia statutes, and this is a certification from the Colorado Archives and Public Records, um, and it says here that um, this is taken from the General Laws, Joint Resolutions, Materials, Private Acts passed at the first session of the Legislative Assembly, Denver, Colorado, September 9, 1861, and so. Uh, this is a title page, pages 20, 21, uh, total of five pages, okay? And so there's up in the top right-hand corner, there's a certification. And, um, and so this is this, the uh, certification saying where this came from. And now this is Article 13, an amendment. If any citizen of the United States shall accept, claim, receive, or retain any title, nobility, or honor, or shall without the consent of Congress accept or and retain any present pension uh, office or emolument of any kind, whatever, from any emperor, king, prince, or foreign power, such person shall cease to be a citizen of the United States and shall be incapable of holding any office of trust or profit under them or either of them. And so um, the point being is, is that it's in multiple locations where this has been located, and I'm, I'm sure, I mean, that was 1861, the other one's 1819. So this real Article 13 Amendment was allowed for a long time. It obviously was disappeared a, a during the Civil War. Um, anyway, so we have it taken from uh, 1819 Virginia Statutes and uh, 1861 Colorado Statutes. And a little diversion now. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to click the bell next to the subscribe button so you're notified when there's a new upload. And there's the front page of my channel and an arrow pointing at the bell. A little pop-up window will come up and uh, you'll have an opportunity to check the box. And that's assuming you want to be notified uh, uh, of new uploads. Um, I try and upload um, five times a week, um, so but it's up to you. Anyways, back to the topic at hand. Uh, this is Avalon Project, the uh, uh, Paris Peace Treaty of September 13th, th September 30th, 1783. It's called the Definitive Treaty of Peace, and uh, the important stuff is, is that uh, that I want to point out is that um, it says uh, the divine providence uh, to dispose the hearts of the most serene and most potent King George. So, woo, he's, so he's got some big cojones, eh? <laughs> Anyways, he's the point I want to point out is he's king of 
Great Britain and France and Ireland, okay, he's and he's Arch Treasurer and Prince Elector of the Holy Roman Empire and of the United States of America. Now they don't put these things in a treaty unless it's relevant, okay, and uh, and so uh, King George signed the, the as King of England and France and as Arch Treasurer and Prince Elector of the Holy Roman Empire and of the United States of America. And uh, so what what essentially they're saying there, and I'm going to show it here a little bit more, is that, uh, that uh, King George financed both sides of the War of Independence, and he did it with Roman cult money. That's the reason that stuff about the Roman Empire is in there. And the Founding Fathers had to know this too. Okay, They had to know that he was King of England and France for sure, and I'm sure they can read, so when they went and signed that treaty, I'm sure they could read that, too. <laughs> Anyways, the Roman cult was responsible for the War of Independence. Okay, that's exactly where this is going. And uh, this is um, 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 Article 1 uh, of a treaty that talks about the first bankruptcy. Okay, and this was taken, actually, from Treaties and Other International Acts of United States of America, edited by Hunter Miller, Volume 2, Documents 1 through 40, 1776 to 1818, Washington, and it's printed by the Government Printing Office in 1931. Anyways, Article 1, it is agreed and certified that the sums advanced by His Majesty to the Congress of the United States under the title of a loan in the years 1778, 1779, 1780, 1781, and the present 1782 amount to the sum of 18 million livres money of France, According to the following 21 receipts of the above-mentioned underwritten Minister of Congress given in virtue of his full powers by which receipts the said minister has promised in the name of Congress and in behalf of the 13 United States to cause to be paid and reimbursed to the Royal Treasury of His Majesty on the 1st of January 1788 at the house of his Grand Banker at Paris the, sum, the said sum of uh, 18 million uh, money of France at with interest at five percent per annum, and um, and this is a treaty between the King of France, uh, which was King George, and the thirteen colonies of the United States of North America signed at Versailles, July sixteenth, seventeen eighty two. Okay, the other treaty was seventeen eighty three, the Treaty of Peace. Debt was due and payable on the first January seventeen eighty eight, and this created the first bankruptcy. And uh, the bankruptcy under international laws for 70 years. And so the United States emerged from that bankruptcy in 1858. And three years later, the southern states walked out of Congress and the Battle of Fort Sumter, April 12th, uh, uh, 1861. Um, which uh, it's, you know, it's all about debt slavery. That's what these bankster thieves, what they do. Anyways, so back to the topic of the Article 13 and Amendment. Uh, uh, it was proposed in, in 1811. The Roman cults owned and operated crown engaged in the War of 1812 to facilitate the quote-unquote disappearance of the true Article 13 and Amendment. One of the major engagements was when the British went to the Capitol and burned the national of the Capitol and the National Archives, and the ratification records would have been kept in the National Archives. And it's interesting to note that my first case when I went to the Supreme Court was against the IRS thieves, and uh, and that was one of the issues I brought up. And uh, I said that the, that the War of 1812 was orchestrated to facilitate the disappearance of the true Article 13 and Amendment. And uh, because the Roman cult intended that there, uh, actually I call it the crown, I wasn't uh, at the point. That was back in 2007. I didn't understand how the Roman cult was tied into the crown at that time. And so it was the Crown wanted their, uh, uh, their bar members, their foreign agents of the Crown, to infiltrate the government and seize control. And so they orchestrated this War of 1812. And, uh, and as a result, uh, that's exactly what they've done. And the interesting thing is, is that in that case, they didn't dispute one word that I said. They waived their right to respond, which essentially admits everything. Uh, anyways, now a little diversion announcing a subscription-based YouTube channel called Sovereignty International. The recommended cost of the subscription is currently $1.99 because it avoids the advertising only. When I first set this thing up, uh, I was going to have some exclusive material on there. But really, my agenda is to expo expose all the fraud and deception that these New World Order Satanists uh, are engaging in. 
um, because that's how they're enslaving us. And so it'll help everyone. And for that reason, yeah, I couldn't think of anything that I wanted to have on there exclusively. I do have a um, Arlington private information share that's on there exclusively, um, but it really doesn't have anything that any other private information share, you know, doesn't have. And so, um, uh, but, you know, if you want to make a donation of $1.99 a month, it's certainly appreciated. Uh, but that's all it costs is $1.99 a month and you avoid the advertising. I'm currently publishing five videos a week. And uh, the YouTube channel, some people had some trouble finding it. And so a link to the YouTube channel is at the bottom of the page. Um, and this is the front page of the YouTube channel. And if you notice at the top, there's a, another link. And um, other people have contacted me. Well, actually, what they did is send me a donation of $1.99. And while that's appreciated, I was concerned that they were wanting me to sign them up for the YouTube channel. And so I sent them an email. They haven't responded, so I guess it was a donation. Anyways, I offered to return it if they were thinking of uh, uh, wanting me to sign them up. I have absolutely no control over that whatsoever. That's all YouTube that handles that. And uh, they have to start the free trial is what you have to do. Um, I, I can't even see all the subscribers, okay? Um, so I can see some of them, uh, but I can't see them all. And uh, so I have no control over subscribers. If you want to subscribe, then you're going to have to click that Start Free Trial button and take it from there. And I'm sure YouTube is going to want some payment arrangements or who knows what. But anyways, um, just for your information, I cannot sign anybody up. I have no control over uh, subscribers to that channel. Anyways, back to the topic at hand. Inns of court. Uh, these are certain private unincorporated associations in the nature of collegiate houses located in London and invested with the exclusive privilege of calling men to the bar. And so, and that's Black's Law Dictionary, 5th edition, page 709. And so there's an American Inns of Court Foundation in every state have, have local Inns of Court chapters. The Inns of Court is uh, four law schools located in the city of London. Uh, they're called Gray's Inn, Lincoln's Inn, Inner Temple, and Middle Temple. The city of London was not conquered by William the Conqueror in 1066. The city of London is approximately one to two miles square in downtown London. I, I'm not sure if it's square. It's certainly rectangular. It has a wall around it. That's the point. And it's foreign territory to the rest of England. And so uh, the true Article uh, 13 and Amendment made, him, made it impossible for the Roman cult's bar members to hold any position of trust requires an oath of office. A position of trust requires an oath of office. And bar actually stands for British Accreditation Regency. And so, and now another little diversion, cubeyard.com. For great custom websites, domain names, and hostings, go to cubeyard.com. And use coupon code CY172 for 20% off your first order. cubeyard.com, your source for websites, domain names, and hosting. And now back to the topic at hand. All bar members are getting a special privilege or honor from a foreign power. All bar members are foreign agents of the Roman cult. All bar members have a title of nobility, and it's called Esquire. You see, even a lot of them actually use the title of nobility. And an emolument is a lawful gain or profit which arises from an office. They're all receiving emoluments. And, um, and um, so Esquire is a title applied uh, by courtesy to officers of almost every description, to members of the bar and others. In England, it's a title above that of a gentleman and below that of a knight. Um, and this is um, an act of Congress. Uh, it's Public Law 415 uh, in uh, June 19, 1934. Uh, the Supreme Court of the United States shall have power to prescribe by general rules uh, and dis for the district courts of the United States, for the courts of the D.C., and the forms and process writs, pleadings, motions, and the practice and procedure of civil actions at law. And so, again, the point is, is that the Supreme Court um, basically regulates all lawyers, okay? And, and the rules are actually for lawyers, and I can show that, but uh, we're not going to talk about that today. We're talking about bar members. And so I've showed it in other videos. Uh, anyways... Um, the Supreme Court in every state, including D.C. Supreme Court, is for the United States, and, um, and the Supreme Court in every state regulates lawyers and the rules. And so all bar members are regulated by the Supreme Court of the state. Uh, all bar members wear the Roman cult military uniform, 
uh, and the real Article 13 an amendment was put in place to prevent bar members from having any influence in America because bar members are the Roman cult. They're agents of the Roman cult. And there we have some bar members here. We also have one of their code enforcers. But the two on the left, the judge and the prosecutor, are all both bar members. They're wearing their black robe cult, their military uniform. And the one on the right, obviously, is wearing a military uniform as well. Military uniform equals Roman cult. And uh, this is Downs versus Bidwell um, and the dissenting opinion of Justice Marshall Harlan. Two national governments exist, one to be maintained under the Constitution with all its restrictions, the other to be maintained by Congress outside and independent of that instrument. Congress is owned and operated by the Roman cult. It's all based on citizenship. Do you know who you are? Watch the Do You Know Who You Are playlist and watch the Everything is an Illusion video. Martial law equals Roman cult. There's two. You can be in the sovereign de jure government or you can be one of the slaves. There is no common law offenses against the United States, only those acts which Congress has forbidden with penalties for disobedience of its commands or crimes. There's no common law in the United States. There's no common law in Texas. There's no common law in any state. Under Texas law, no act or omission is a crime unless made so by statute. In America, there's no common law in any state. The legislature may create an offense and in the same enactment provide exceptions to its application. And they have to, what they do, okay, to maintain the illusion for the sheeple is they, um, they pass statutes and say that, the, then put all their little where to fors and all that stuff, so it's really kind of confusing, but... They pass statutes that say the common law applies unless and until there's something else is, uh, is there, okay? <laughs> and, and so they, they do that, okay? But if they didn't have statutes, then there'd be no common law, period. And so it's all under martial law. And, um, and uh, that's the bottom line, okay? And so they have, to, they have to pass statutes that there's common law. Uh, everything is an admiralty. There's no common law crimes. A writ of error doth not lie upon a sentence in admiralty, but an appeal. And that's Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition, under the definition of admiralty. But they're citing Book 4 of Coke's Institutes on the Laws of England. And that's like from the 1500s. And so appeals are an admiralty. That's why it's called a court of appeals. It's the same thing that precipitated the War of Independence. This is exactly the same thing that went on. This is taken from the causes and necessities for taking up arms, 1775. Statutes have been passed extending courts of admiralty and vice admiralty far beyond their ancient limits for depriving us of the accustomed and inestimable privilege of trial by jury in cases affecting both life and property to supersede the course of common law and instead thereof to publish and order the use, the exercise of the law marshal. And for altering fundamentally the form of government we established by charter, uh, we saw the miseries to which such despotism would reduce us, okay? And it is a despotism. It's a dictatorship. They're tyrants. Uh, uh, it's a dictatorship. And they want to maintain that illusion, so they don't want you knowing this kind of stuff. Uh, but, uh, but that's exactly what's going on. And this is actually taken from a book called The Non-Ratification of the 14th Amendment by Judge H. Ellett, Utah Supreme Court, in the case Diet versus Turner. And he says uh, basically the same thing. But he says it in a different way. And so what he says is, In the meantime, civil law was the form of law imposed by the Roman Empire, which was largely, if not wholly, governed by martial law rule. Equity has always been understood to follow the law. To have superior equity is to turn things on their head. This is exactly what happens when martial law is imposed. If equity is the law, then it follows its own course rather than following the common law, thereby destroying the common law and leaving what's called equity in its place. And these bail priests, these Satanist bar member whores in these kangaroo courts will flat out tell you in there, I can do anything I want in here. And they'll be right, okay, because it's all martial law. And, and they'll, they'll sit there and, uh, um, you know, it's, it's all about, uh, uh, they'll, if you argue the Constitution, they'll sit there and they'll say, well, the Constitution doesn't apply in here. I don't want to hear another word about it, okay? And they'll be right about that, too. So... A penal action is an action on a penal statute, an action for recovery of penal penalty given by statute, uh, where an action is founded entirely upon a statute. The only object of it is to recover a penalty or forfeiture. Such action is a penal action. So we're going to talk about some words, and you have to understand that anytime there's a statute, they're all voluntary. 
is the contract, and it's all going to the Roman cult is where it's going. Uh, the words penal and penalty in their strict and primary sense denote a punishment, whether corporal or pecuniary, imposed and enforced by the state for a crime or offense, okay, and that's so an offense has to do with penal statutes, okay. The noun, uh, uh, because at common law it's called a wrongdoer, okay, <laughs> an offense has to do with uh, a penal statute. The noun penalty is defined forfeiture or to be forfeited for non-compliance with an agreement. They assault you with one of their so-called contracts. The words forfeit and penalty are substantially synonymous. A penal action is one founded entirely on statute, and the only object is to recover a penalty or a forfeiture imposed as a punishment for a certain specific offense, while a remedial action is one which is brought to obtain compensation or indemnity. A penal action is a civil suit, okay? So then the bail priest um, uh, gets up there, and you ask the bail priest, well, what's the nature of this action? He'll tell you it's quasi-criminal, okay? So he doesn't want to admit that it's a lawsuit, okay? Because because um, because a lawsuit they can't uh, uh, put you in jail over, okay? But these ones they can because it's 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 uh, uh, it falls under the Roman cult. It's penal, okay? A penal action is a civil suit brought for the recovery of a statutory forfeiture when inflicted as punishment for an offense against the public. Such actions are civil actions on the one hand closely related to criminal prosecutions, but on the other act to actions for private injuries in which a party agreed may by statute recover punitive damages. And so, and now another little diversion. Check out my other videos. Bankster Thieves 1, 2, and 3, Roman Cult Slave Scam Series, Bankrupt Corporate So-Called Governments, Bar Members 1 through 3, Do It Yourself, How Not to Volunteer for the Selective Service in the Draft, Martial Law is Here, no, Do It Yourself, No Income Tax, Do It Yourself, No Sales Tax, Do It Yourself, Traffic Stop 1 and 2, Do It Yourself, Free Mail, and Do It Yourself, Kangaroo Courts 1 through 9. Um, a statute equals a contract equals Roman cult. Did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges? But individuals, when acting as representatives of a collective group, cannot be said to be exercising their personal rights and duties, nor be entitled to their purely personal privileges. Rather, they assume the rights, duties, and privileges of the artificial entity or association in which they are agents or officers, and they are bound by its obligations. Okay, And so, when that bail priest says, Are you the name? Then and you say yes, then you just agreed to be uh, a surety for their fictitious entity. That's exactly what's going on. That's why they're doing that. So the question you have to ask them is: uh, Is there a contract associated with me telling you, uh, giving you the name? And uh, they won't want to answer that one. I guarantee you. <laughs> Whenever the Uniform Commercial Code creates a presumption with respect to a fact or provides that a fact is presumed, the trier of fact must find the existence of the fact unless and until evidence is introduced that supports the finding of its non-existence. That's the Uniform Commercial Code. Uh, uh, uniform Commercial Code equals Unidroit. Unidroit completely governs the Uniform Commercial Code. That's all coming from the United Nations and the Roman cult. Did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges? And uh, more uniform com co commercial code equals unidroit equals Roman cult. In an action with respect to an instrument, the authenticity of and authority to make each signature on the instrument are admitted unless specifically denied in the pleadings. If the validity of a signature is denied in the pleadings, the burden of establishing validity is on the person claiming validity. But the signature is presumed to be authentic and authorized. And so that's that's uh, Texas Business Commerce Code, which is the same thing as the Uniform Commercial Code, uh, Section 3.308, Proof of Signatures and Status as Holder in Due Course. So the point being is that what they do is they forge your signature onto a contract, and then they um, they um, uh, presume that it's valid, okay, unless you dispute it. And Carl Lentz actually uh, uh, got his son back after 11 years by filing a one-page lawsuit against CPS in federal court, and, and, and one of the things was is forgery. Okay, they forced his signature onto a contract. The following rules apply in an action on a certificated security against the issuer. Unless specifically denied in the pleadings, each signature on a, certific on a security certificate or in a necessary endorsement is admitted. 
If the effectiveness of a signature is put in issue, the burden of establishing effectiveness is on the party claiming under the signature, but the signature is presumed to be genuine and authorized. And again, that's the Uniform Commercial Code 8.114, Evidentiary Rules Concerning Certificated uh, uh, Securities. So again, and there's people that have found their criminal case at Fidelity Investments circulating on Wall Street. Uh, uh, these Satanists uh, go and assault you with one of their so-called contracts. They forge your signature onto it, and then they securitize it and sell it on Wall Street. And that's exactly what these Satanists do. And uh, the Uniform Commercial Code equals Unidroit equals Roman cult. Statutes equals contract equals Roman cult. Did you give up your God-given rights for some satanic privileges? These Roman cult Satanists bar member whores masquerading as judge forge your signature onto a contract and then presume it's authorized and authentic. Who's going to call a judge a liar? He's not even operating as a judge, but everybody thinks he's a judge. That is how they are populating the prisons. Carl Lentz brought up the issue of forgery against CPS when they stole his son in a successful one-page lawsuit. He's got a website. Do a search. He's, you can even download the lawsuit off the Internet. See the Judicial Horrors video. He, the convicted felon, has, as a consequence of his crime, not only forfeited his liberty, but all his personal rights except those which the law and its humanity affords him. He is, for the time being, a slave of the state, okay? I keep telling you they're selling you into slavery, and that's exactly what's going on. Here's a court case that even talks about it. Roman cult equals slavery equals anyone in prison. And at common law, they need to be put to death. Okay, if a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel, make merchandise of him or sell of him, then that thief shall die, and thou shalt put evil away from among you. That's why they got at the first order of business of these Satanists is to, uh, is to force the government into bankruptcy, because then they can get rid of that nasty little common law problem. And, and this year they pass a few statutes that, that, that bring in common law, but only parts of it, the part that they feel like having around, so they can keep maintaining the illusion. And so that's what these Satanists do. International law is a subset of canon law. International law started with the Roman cult. Unidroit stands for the International Institute for the Unification of Private Law. Unidroit is loaded about, located about 100 yards from the Holy See. Unidroit controls and governs the Uniform Commercial Code. Through Unidroit, the Roman cult has seized control of all courts. The Roman cult bar members are already officers of the court. See bar members 1, 2, and 3 videos. The United Nations is owned and operated by the Crown and their Roman cult handlers. Get us out of the U.N. now. See the Crown is owned and operated by the Roman cult video. See the United States is a Crown colony and the Crown owns and operates the United Nations 1 and 2 videos. Unidroit is coming from the United Nations. See the Roman cult slave scam 1 video. The United Nations maintains the international law collection, which is also coming from the Roman cult. They're using the Roman cult's international law to assault us with their fraudulent, fictitious, sustique trust, U.S. citizen, slave. That's, it's all contingent upon that slave. This is uh, the Vatican's Holocaust, a sensational account of the most horrifying religious massacre of the 20th century by Avril Manhattan, who, a uh, knight of Malta, it says here. Uh, he lived from 1914 to 1990. Avril Manhattan is the world's foremost authority on Roman Catholicism and politics. A resident of London during World War II, he operated a radio station called Radio Freedom, broadcasting to occupied Europe. He was the author of over 20 books, including the bestseller, The Vatican and World Politics, twice um, a book of the month, and, and going through 57 editions. He was a Great Britain who risked his life daily to expose some of the darkest secrets of the papacy. His book, were number one on the Forbidden Index for the past 50 years, and editor's note from issue from 1986. In 2006, the record is 70 years uh, on the Forbidden Book List. And um, so the point being is, as there's more to this, okay? The Vatican's Holocaust is not a misnomer, an accusation, and even less a speculation. It is a historical fact. And this is found in the preface to the American edition. Rabid nationalism and religious dogmatism were its two main ingredients. During the existence of Croatia as an independent Catholic state, over 700,000 men, women, and children perished. Many were executed, tortured, died of starvation, buried alive, or were burned to death. 
Hundreds were forced to become Catholic. Catholic padres ran concentration camps. Catholic priests were officers of the military corps, which committed such atrocities. 700,000 in a total population of a few million proportionally would be as if one-third of the USA population had been exterminated by the Catholic militia. Uh, what has been uh, gathered in this book will vindicate the veracity of these facts. Dates, names, places, as well as photos were, are there to prove them. They should become known to the American public, not to foster vindictiveness, but to warn them of the danger which racialism and sectarianism, when applied with religious intolerance, can bring to any contemporary nation, whether in Europe or in the New World. The, this work should be assessed without prejudice as a lesson but even more vital as a warning for the future of the Americans, beginning with that of the USA. Avril Manhattan, 1986, that's four years before he died. Um, and our, an armed Serbia could have easily prevented this Holocaust. Thank God for the Second Amendment to the Constitution, which guarantees the right to bear arms. Freedom of religion and an armed citizenry go hand in hand, and it's the only guarantee that this won't happen in the U.S., Editor's note, it is the Vatican One World Government that doesn't want you to have the right to own arms or to use any means to defend yourself. And so the point, I'm, the reason I'm bringing this up is, well, one of the reasons is this is not, even though I rail on the Roman cult and the Vatican, this is not about people who happen to be Catholic. People, I mean, there's some of my best friends happen to be Catholic, and, and they're the ones that are feeding me this information, quite frankly. So... It's definitely not about some of the most wonderful people on the planet happen to be Catholic. And so, but the Roman cult is satanic. And, uh, and bar members is another one, okay? This is not about all bar members, although I, you know, haven't found too many that were worth anything. I do have a friend that's a bar member, and, but he's disbarred, and I'm helping him trying to get his bar card back, which, you know, I hope he does for his sake. But, uh, and, and I know that he thinks outside the box now. Matter of fact, he even admitted... He told me, he says, uh, two years ago, he said, I would have never believed a word you said. And he says, now I believe every word of it. <laughs> so we need people on the inside that understand this stuff, you know. And so, anyways, bar members equals bail priests, okay. The United States has the biggest prison population on the planet. Everybody in prison is there because of a bar member. The banksters get away with their thefts because of bar members. The United States makes war on foreign countries because of bar members. The pharmaceutical companies sell their drugs, which is sorcery, because of bar members. Okay, now, now, uh, and there's no justice in the courts because of bar members. The literally millions of codes, rules, and regulations are brought to us by bar members. The courts are an extortion racket is what they are. That's exactly what they are. And so let's go through these, okay? The biggest popula prison population on the planet is, 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 uh, is because of bar members. Well, that's true. Bar members were on the bench. Bar members were prosecutors. Now, some of those people, maybe they deserve to be there, but most of them don't, quite frankly. I mean, most of them are victimless crimes. And uh, the banksters get away with their thefts because of bar members. And, and that's pretty easy to establish. The banksters have teams of bar members. The United States makes war on foreign countries because of bar members. I guarantee you that they run anytime they're thinking about doing anything. They run it past the Department of Justice, and they get it justified. Furthermore, there's teams of bar members that go out with the U.S. troops, and 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 if there's war crimes going on, they go and, and turn them in. That's exactly what goes on. There's teams of bar members everywhere as far as the U.S. military is concerned. The pharmaceutical companies sell their drugs which is sorcery because of bar members, all of their drugs, and, and most of them are absolutely worthless and kill more people than they save and cause all sorts of side effects, and, uh, and just don't get me going about that, okay? So, so most of that stuff is, it's sorcery, okay? If you go and look, read the Old Bible and the Old Testament, that's sorcery, okay? Those, those are the drug pushers. There's no justice in the courts because of bar members. Well, that's pretty obvious. The millions of codes, rules, and regulations are brought to us by bar members, and that's 70% of the people in the legislatures are bar members, 70 to 90%. Furthermore, any code, there's a guy that contacted me from the uh, uh, New Hampshire legislature. He was a member of the New Hampshire legislature, and he wanted some ideas on what he could put into some statutes for the right to travel. And... Uh, 
and so I, I sent him a bunch of material, but the point is, is what he told me, he says that there's this, their legal department, they have to turn everything over to the legal department and get them to approve anything they want to do. And so bar members are controlling everything, okay? And the courts are an extortion racket is exactly what they are. They sell you their so-called justice. There's, there's bar members here. There's two of them. Bar members equals bail priests. That's really where it's all going, okay? These people are bail priests. This is a satanic religious ceremony. The two on the left are both bar members. Um, and they got their black robes on, okay? And that's a satanic religious ceremony is what's going on there. And so anyways, I appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. I hope you get something out of it. And circulate the word this, word, this around because bar members are the source of all the problems that are going on. It's all coming from the Roman cult. And, uh, and, and, and we need to put a stop to it, okay? Bar members are the source of the problem. And, and it's the biggest source. Let me put it that way. It's the biggest source. The Roman cult would have next to no power in America if it wasn't for all the bar members running around. America has two-thirds of the world's lawyers. Can you believe it? And uh, I saw a statistic here, uh, you know, it's been a few years now. But, uh, but um, there's two-thirds of the Amer world's lawyers are in America. Anyways, uh, have a great day. Thanks for watching. And um, don't forget to subscribe.